Welcome everyone to another video. This will be the first in a series of stage management videos and this video is going to be focused on prep week, the week before actors and directors arrive. Let's dive in. So prep week for stage managers. It's the week before actors and directors arrive and it's kind of your opportunity to get your head in the game and figure out the play as much as you can before any of the other members arrive to the rehearsal hall. When I arrive to a new theater with a new show, the first thing I do is read the script. It's amazing how much information you can learn from the show just by reading the script. Then I'll also contact my stage management team to let them know I'm in the building and if there's anything they need to establish that relationship. Then I start working on what's called a play analysis. Now this is my secret weapon and not everyone uses this, but I find it super helpful for organizing a breakdown that I can reference rather than flipping through pages in the script. So a play analysis is basically taking all play elements and breaking it down page by page and having it all laid out in kind of like a table. When I say all play elements, I mean props, costumes, any mentions of characters, scenes, set, sound, lighting, special effects, anything that doesn't really fit into any of those categories that you may have questions about. Just jot it down in your play analysis and then you have something to reference beyond just the script. So after I make my play analysis, the very next thing I'll do is creating a scene breakdown. Now a scene breakdown is exactly what it sounds like. Basically it breaks down the scenes into bite-sized pieces and allows you to schedule rehearsals for actors. It allows them to figure out kind of when they're used during the show. For costumes, they can figure out how much time they have for quick changes. There are a couple different versions of scene breakdowns. For the most part, I use a French scene breakdown. It'll break down scenes even further to actors' entrances and exits, which will be super helpful if you have like a 20 page scene and you want to work on the part where there's only two actors in it. You're not calling the rest of the company for the entire scene when you're only working on those two. Okay, so once I have made my scene breakdown, there's kind of three different facets that I start heading in. The first one is focusing on creating my prompt book and my prompt script. The second one is focusing on the people that I need to communicate with ahead of starting rehearsal. And the last one is all of the shared paperwork that either my stage management team is also going to be working off of or uh, any shared documentation that we give to the acting company, i.e. contact lists, uh, schedules, etc. The first faucet working on prompt book, I start with my blocking page as well as the script and I'll make my blocking page with the mini according to the ground plan for this specific show. Usually you get that from the technical director, sometimes you have to build it yourself. Other times you just leave it blank because you really don't know what the ground plan is going to be. Then I'll start highlighting my script, I'll highlight all the actors' names, I'll write numbers next to all the lines so I have references in my blocking page. And if I have time, I'll highlight the legend, write down page numbers, and write down any props or costumes or special effects that are mentioned on that page. The next faucet will be communicating with all the different people. The first person I'll talk to is the producer or the production manager, basically whoever hired you for the production, because chances are they're most in the know about any problems that they foresee for you, any challenges that they're currently facing, any contract obligations, etc. After that, I'll start meeting with the different heads of department and the designers, if they're available, to get an idea of what the design is for this show. Chances are these people have been working for some time before you arrived. This is your opportunity to get caught up on this information so that you can be the expert when rehearsal starts and people are asking questions. So I'll meet with the technical director, the set designer, props designer, head of props, costume designer, head of costumes, and kind of just 
establish a relationship with them. And finally, I will message the director to try to get an idea of if I haven't worked with them before, do they work chronologically? Do they want to focus on music if it's a musical? Try to get an idea of what it is they want to do for the first couple days and kind of what their working strategy is for this show. So after I've met with everyone and kind of gathered as much information as I can, then I'll start working on some of the other documents, things like cast list, production notes, contact list, medical information, scene timings, scene by scenes, line notes, props and wardrobe presets, show reports, running notes, sign in sheet, the list goes on. There's, there's so much paperwork that you do as a stage manager. Basically anything that you can do now during your prep week to get yourself ready for the coming weeks of rehearsal, do it now so that you get it out of the way. One of the last things I'll do is contacting the company, touching base, making sure that they know where they're going come the first day of rehearsal, finding out if they have any allergies, parking instructions, instructions to pick up scripts if they wanna come and pick them up early, any script updates, if there's anything that you can do to make their first day a success. I'll send them the first schedule one or two days before rehearsal starts just in case the director changes their mind about what they want to do. The next thing to do is prepare the rehearsal hall. So the rehearsal hall, you need to make sure that there are treats, coffee, snacks, stationery, tables, production tables, music stands and chairs, welcome packages, any company specific information, emergency medical information, etc. Then if your director wants to get up on their feet, it's important to have as many set and props elements as you can, even if they're just rehearsal items, just as long as you have something to use. You need to make sure that your call board is also set up. So this includes things like posting your cast list, scene breakdown, master calendar, daily schedule, design elements, sign in. You also need treats and snacks and things that are gonna keep people happy on the first day. Water coffee, any allergy signs if necessary. You need to make sure that you are well stocked up on all sorts of stationery that you'll use on a daily basis. Pencils, highlighters, scissors, tape, hole punch, erasers, staplers, post-its, sharpies, paper clips, elastic bands, rulers, hand sanitizer, and then always make sure that you have some spike tape on hand as well just in case you need to mark anything. Lastly, you have to make sure that the floor is spiked. So if you have any major set pieces or specific entrances or exits, it's important to mark these with tape so that everyone gets an idea of what it is they're gonna be working with once they get onto the stage. Spiking the floor is one of the most challenging things if you're not a math brain. If there's more interest in learning more about spiking the stage, please leave a comment down below and I can expand on it. And that goes for any of these topics. If there's anything that you want me to talk more in depth about, please leave a comment down below and I will expand on them. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at there for prep week preparations. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. In the next video, we're gonna be focused on what a stage manager does during rehearsal. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care.